Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we will start with the anatomy of the nose and paranasal sinuses. The nose, as you know, is composed of two parts, the external nose and the internal nose or the nasal cavity. The external nose composed of the anterior nares, which is lined by hair and lined by skin containing hair, the hair is called the vibrisi and the, this area is called the vestibule of the nose. The anterior, uh, the bony constituents and the other parts of the nose composed of bony constituents and cartilaginous constituents. The upper third is bony, the lower two thirds are cartilaginous. The bony part is formed from the nasal bone, this is the nasal bone, and the fro uh, nasal process of the frontal bone up here above, and the nasal process of the maxilla. The cartilaginous parts formed by the, the middle third by the upper lateral cartilages on each side, and this is the nasal septum in between, and the lower third is formed by the lower lateral cartilage on each side with the ala on the side of the lower lateral cartilage and in between these two cartilages as we said is the nasal septum the nasal fossa <laughs> communicates with the sinuses and the nasal pharynx and uh, the flow is formed in the in its anterior three quarters by the palatine process of the maxilla, while the posterior fourth is formed by the horizontal process of the palatine bone. The roof from the anterior to posterior is the nasal process of the frontal bone, the cribriform blade, the ethmoid of ethmoid, and the, uh, finally the body of the sphenoid uh, bone. As in this picture, picture, this is the frontal bone, the cribriform plate of ethmoid, the body of the sphenoid, and it is lined by respiratory epithelium. Respiratory epithelium means the epithelium which is described as a columnar, pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells, except for the upper one square centimeter which is lined by the nasal uh, by olfactory epithelium. This is the roof is formed in the its anterior to posterior from at posterior to posterior as we said nasal process of frontal bone, cribriform blade and body of the sphenoid bone. The respiratory epithelia is very important in this area because it lines the nasal, nasal fossa and the sinuses. And the mucus secreted is directed posteriorly toward the nasal pharynx from the sinuses and from the nasal cavities. Now, the lateral nasal wall is very important and the function of the nose depends on this lateral wall because it contains these uh, what is called the ridges called the turbinates the largest one is the inferior turbinate it is an enfolding of the lateral nasal wall with a bone taba in the center of this erectile tissue it is measured about 60 millimeters from anterior to posterior and forms an important compa uh, component of the nasal valve. We will explain what is the nasal valve and it is embryologically derived from the maxilloterminal bridge. The middle turbinate is by far the most important functional part related to the sinuses. The middle turbinate 
dyes medial to the interior ethmoid hair cells. The maxillary sinus ostium, the nasofrontal duct, and the ancillate process all lies lateral to this structure, the middle terminal. Uh, it is shorter than the inferior terminate, it measures about 40 millimeters, and the height of this terminate is 14.5 millimeters. Anteriorly, and it gets narrow posteriorly about 7 millimeters. It develops from the second ethmoid terminal ridge. The superior terminate is by far the smallest one, lies from its name superiorly and posteriorly. Uh, the meatus, which lies below the turbinate, every area lies below the turbinate, is called the meatus. The superior meatus, we have the superior meatus, the middle meatus, and the inferior meatus. Uh, the meatus, the superior meatus, drains the posterior ethmoid air cells. The nasal valve, we have some constrictions in the nasal cavity, about four constrictions. The important one of these constrictions is the internal nasal valve, like it's in this area. Well, at the second, we have external nasal valve. And it's lined by the ala, this one anteriorly, posteriorly the middle of the fossa, and finally the coenae, the posterior opening of the nasal cavity. Now the external nasal valve boundaries is the lower lateral cartridges in this area, at the lower lateral cartilage, the soft tissue of the ala, the ala, nana, soft tissue. And the membranous septum medially, the septum anteriorly, it's nasal septum, but then the membranous area, but then the adnet colium, which is the medial crora of the lower lateral cartilage. Behind the medial crora, the membranous part, you can palpate it easily, the semir membranous septum. And the cell of the nostril, the atrial cell of the nostril, some elevation before you get to the floor of the nasal cavity. It can be the site of obstruction. But the most important one is the internal nasal valve. The boundary is marked medially in nasal septum, laterally, and upper lateral cartilages in this area and the anterior end of the inferior turbinate inferior in this area. It lies about 1.3 centimeters from the nares, and this is very important, it accounts for about, it accounts for Fifty percent of the airway resistance. This is very important. And the inferior turbine can affect this area greatly because it can enlarge and go smaller, and this will cause constriction or narrowing in this area. This is the nasal valve, internal nasal valve. This is the nasal septum. This is the lateral, our lateral cartilages. And this is the uh, uh, head of the or uh, anterior end of the inferior turbinate. The paranasal sinuses are spaces lies within the bones of the skull, the maxillae, and the maxillae it is called maxillary sinus, and the ethmoid. Uh, 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 bone is called the ethmoid sinuses and the frontal is called the frontal sinuses and and the sphenoid body it is called the sphenoidal air sinuses all lines by mucous membrane and whenever we say that this, uh, these are lined by mucous membrane this means we have a mucous secretion and all these sinuses so all these sinuses are connected to the nasal cavity through ostia so they can drain their mucus secretion into the nasal cavity and then posteriorly to the 
and we had a major parents. Usually the drainage is through the meatus on the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. All the sinuses drain into the middle meatus below the middle turbinate, except the posterior ethmoid air cells drain into the superior meatus and the sphenoid sinus drain into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now by description, the maxillary sinus is a pyramidal in shape, as you can see. It uh, the size is about 15 uh, millimeters uh, or nodes, and occupies the body of the maxilla. The base of lies medially, at the base of the pyramid lies medially, and the apex lies in the zygoma, laterally in this margin, in here it's a new zygoma zygomatic bone and it is the largest of the sinuses and the main osseum is situated high up as you can medial wall maltage get ali akthar min nos al fatha ihna saira high up between the medial wall and the roof of the cavity so it is not a dependent area the drainage يكون عالي مكان عالي فهنا ما راح يصير عندنا هنا accumulation of mucus because all the secretion will be drained toward the ostium this is genetically determined the cilia will push the uh, mucus secretion toward the ostium the natural ostium the ethmoidal air sinus is composed of of multiple sinuses the anterior one approximately 7 to 15 thin walled cavities within the lateral masses of the ethmoid bones. And the two groups here, the anterior or posterior. And the anterior is the posterior. The first one is the anterior is small, numerous, while the posterior are large, pyramidal, and smaller in number. The anterior, as we said, all drain into the middle meatus, anterior ethmoid air cells, while the posterior ethmoid air cells drain into the superior meatus and the ethmoid is separated from the orbit by a thin walled bone it's called the lamina papyricea and the lacrimal sac is related laterally to this anterior cells either a lacrimal size sac in this area now the frontal sinus the average capacity is lies in the body of the frontal bone. Average capacity is 7 cc in adults. The right and left sinuses are often asymmetrical. The amenishukul septum in between the two sinuses are eccentric, mobile midline. The amen one is large, one is small. And the frontonasal duct, duct, na, the ostium, kun. على شكل كليفت تصير اوستيا دايركت اوستيا بين دي فرونتال ساينس عند النيزل كافيتي وانما يصير على شكل سليت لايك اوبننج وبعدين تنفتح بالميدل ميتس ايضا يسموه فرونت نيزل داكت ات باسس ثرو ذا انتيرير بارت اوف ذا اثمود لارج اند ذين اوبنز انتو ذا ميدل ميتس وايل ذا سفينويد ساينس لايز ان ذا بادي اوف ذا سفينويد بون in the center of the skull base behind the upper part of the nasal fossa upper part of the nasal fossa it occupies the body of the sphenoid bone the average capacity is than 7 cc in the adults right and left also are asymmetrical separated by a septum and nematization is very variable in this sinus and the, sin uh, the ostium Sinus ostium situated in the upper part of the anterior wall. Also, a dependent area is the left side. But necessarily push the mucus toward the ostium, natural ostium of the sinus, and it opens into the this area, the sphenoethmoidal recess. The green slit-like area is called the sphenoethmoidal recess. It lies behind the superior turbinate in this area. The relations of the sphenoid sinus, sphenoid sinus lies in an important area, the center of the skull base, it is related to the cavernous sinus, with its nerves, fourth, third, fourth, and fifth, the ophthalmic and maxillary divisions of the fifth uh, nerve, 
واسيد تكفير ينير وذا انترال كاراتيد اكتري او تكفير لاترالي or within the lateral wall of the spinal sinus and the pituitary gland optic chiasm olfactory tracts frontal lobe of the brain above the sinus while the vessels and nerves from the sphenopalatine foramen lies in the front uh, lies in the front of the sphenoid face as they pass to the septum the basilar artery brain stem related to its posterior Wall. It is called the base sphenoid. Histology, as we said, we have the respiratory epithelium in the lower two thirds, olfactory epithelium, the nasal cavity, in the upper third. We have three layers on the turbinate. The uh, mucous membrane is very thick laterally, while medial is thin mucosa, and there is a bone inside the turbinate. As we said in this picture, had the bone in the center of the turbinate, and a thick mucous membrane laterally, medially from thinner. Had the whole muscle and the hypertrophy for for controlling the temperature and the humidity of the inspired air. Blood supply. We have an extensive blood supply to the nose and. Paranasal sinuses comes from the external and internal carotid arteries. From the external carotid artery, we have the main one, the whole sphenopalatine artery. The sphenopalatine artery is the main blood supply of the nose. The sphenopalatine artery is the main blood supply of the nasal cavity. With other with participation from the greater palatine, superior labial, inferior infraorbital, and superior dental, where descending palatine or pharyngeal arteries. From the internal carotid, we have two major arteries: the anterior and posterior moider artery. Supply the upper part of the nasal cavity. They come from the ophthalmic artery and supra. Orbital and then supratrochlear arteries. Nerve supply. We have an extensive, also an extensive nerve supply with all types of sensation, autonomic, a special sense, lower olfactory, where well, general sensation, an autonomic and sympathetic, so in the vasoconstriction, and parasympathetic, so in the vasodilatation and secretion. While olfactory is spread through the first cranial nerve. Responsible for smell sensation, sensory part comes from the trigeminal nerve through the anterior ophthalmic nerve, sphenopalatine gingiva, and we have the greater palatine, short and long ciliary sphenopalatine nerves. Lymphatic drainage to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes, and the function of the nose is purification from large particles. Warming of the inspired air. The inspired air should be at body temperature before it reaches the lower respiratory tract. And humidification or moistening of the inspired air. It should be 100 percent humidified before it reaches the lower respiratory tract. And finally, all function. While the functions of the sinuses, they have different theories. Some say that it is due to facial development of the complex bone when they develop, they leave these spaces, or for air conditioning, also for controlling the temperature of the air, humidity, and the decrease of the weight of the skull, and finally resonance of the voice. <coughs> Some pathologies related to the smell sensation. Anosmia is complete loss, while hyposmia is partial loss of sensation of smell. Cacosmia, or perception of a bad smell. While parosmia, or a subjective sensation of a non-existent smell. And a reha ma mojuda huwa deishtani. It is called the hallucination of smell. Thank you.